I'm here at the family farm today and we're going to get started planting sweet corn. They said they wanted me to bring my planter down, so I've got it here. Randall said he's going to bring the corn around. I'm kind of waiting on him. I don't know, don't know exactly where he is. As soon as he gets the corn here, we'll get started. Wait. Wait. I thought he was... I thought he was bringing the corn. Yeah. Let's get started. That's right. Looks like he's going to try to plant the sweet corn with a 24 row, 60 foot planter. Whatever it takes, I guess. Ah, so you're putting the corn in. For sweet corn, I guess you just put it in the little the little uh, hopper here, huh? Yeah, down in the very bottom of the little hopper. Okay. So this is a new experience for us anyway, but I guess we're putting the whole bag in this time. So. I'll probably find a grain of field corn in there now. There's one. We don't like field corn in our sweet corn. Makes it a lot easier to see what we're doing with that out of the way. How many kernels is in a bag? Couldn't tell you. Seeds per pound's 3148 and I got a six ounce packet. Okay. How thick are you gonna plant it? Uh good question. Some of it'll be thick and some of it'll be thin, probably. But the goal is probably twenty-eight or twenty-nine thousand okay. seeds per acre. I've been planting mine twenty-five. Maybe I'm not putting enough on. Well you might get bigger ears if you plant it thinner. Yeah, my ears are about the same size as they always have been. Maybe growing a little bit. <laughs> 29 may be too thick for it. I don't know. Somebody will tell us we're doing it wrong. Well, this will be more accurate than most people plant their sweet corn. Well, the problem is, is the planter is made to go across the field, and we want it to do a perfect job in the first two foot of moving, right? It takes it just a minute to, uh, usually takes it just a second to get its population leveled out whenever you first take off. Well, maybe you'll just have to start out in the grass a little bit. Guess we can, we can always mow it off, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. I hadn't thought of that. We'd always been trying to be precision so much before with the finger planter. I'm starting up my generator for the electric motors, electric meters. I'm starting the back fans. Okay, now we've got to fill our meters. You might see some kernels drop out of the it's bottom the of the meters. Fan. He's actually going to plant with only one half of the planter. That's these first 12 rows here. Did you get kernels under every row? I just saw kernels under one. I didn't realize what I was looking for. Well, I just want to make sure they're all dropping. We got kernels. You sure this is big enough? I think it is. Yeah, how long is it going to take you to plant your sweet corn this year? Uh, longer to fill up and back in here than it is to plant it. Twelve and a half seconds? Uh, maybe closer to 30. <laughs> okay, that's about right for that. Now I just got to drive straight. Well, you backed in straight, so you ought to be able to drive out straight. All right. I'm telling the truth there, that's a pretty good backing job, wouldn't you say? Let her down.
Good time to stop. There's a kernel of corn right there. See him down in there? Sweet corn's planted. Well, I guess I won't be needing this. No, seriously, I brought it for Tom. He wants to use it to plant vegetables in his garden. It's not really very good at planting sweet corn. I've tried it and kind of got frustrated with it. So, but it, hopefully it'll be better at planting beans. They're not a, quite as particular. We're planting the real corn now. I think he said he got 28 acres done since I last checked in. One of the hoppers is somewhat empty. So he's gonna hop up in here and uh, rake it all to the front or the back or whatever. Rake it all where it needs to go. Aha, uh -huh. there's not much in there. We're pretty even. Do you have to even that all the way out? I mean, is, is, is that one per row or is it yeah, all? Yeah, well, each, each one of those black guys there is the hose coming out to a row. Okay, so. The end one out there is basically almost out. Right. Okay. But see, there's still the storage in the in the little yellow boxes out there that it delivers to. Yeah. You know, that holds as much as a sweet corn bag did. You know, we filled yeah. it with a, so. Oh, look at that. You can see it sucking it in there. Yeah, that leveler guy, agitator works pretty good to level it out. It just can't move that much. So we've got mainly green seed in this side with yep. a little bit of, of red looking seed. What's what's this about? Well, the purple kernels in here is refuge in the bag. Okay. Uh, it has no insect traits on it. No, it okay. won't kill insects. Okay, so when, when you say this, this would be like the BT or the, yeah. the genetic modification for insects, right? Yeah. To, to keep insects down. Mm -hmm. And they mix it, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's blended. So we're, we're allowing these insects to attack some of the kernels. Right, 5%. 5%, okay. Used to, we did, we'd plant this separately. We would have like- Used to be 20% and it had okay. to be in a in block of so many rows together. Okay. Is the way we, way it used to have to be. Now on this side we got red kernels. Red kernels and still purple as refuge, over here okay. too. Okay. So why are some red? Why is this, this one predominantly red and the other one predominantly green? That's the color that's just that's in the treatment. But it, in this case, it's different brands of corn. So typically, <laughs> typically does one brand of corn use the same color? Uh, for the most part, yes. All okay. the pioneer corn that I've been around is red with purple refuge like this. Or pink, whatever you want to call it. Pink with purple refuge. Folks, we have grown pioneer hybrids since my grandfather worked for them way back in the... Since Pioneer's been a company. Since Pioneer's been a company. Amazing. And uh, we grew 100% Pioneer for 50, 60 All years. All those years, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, last year we tried some decal. And I guess we kind of hate to admit it, but it beat the Pioneer soundly. So what you're seeing here in the green seed is DeKalb on this side, Pioneer on this side, and we'll be able to do a yield check with the combine. So again, last year, the, the DeKalb, in every trial we did, it, it, it won soundly. Yeah. And uh, it's not because we wanted it to, but that's why you do the test. So we're giving given another shot this year we're side by side and everything okay that's the plan for this year so it's not just decal versus pioneer there's each company has a bunch of different hybrids a bunch of different varieties you might call it so when he says they're doing side by side we'll do one decal variety and one pioneer variety and we might try that same 
competition on two different fields or different areas, but then you'll do other competitions. Right, between different hybrids and, different, and both, one of each of the companies yeah. is what we're... And since this is a 24 row planter and we harvest 12 rows at a time, the yield monitor in the combine is able to provide us that answer. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do when you're on the even rows like that. Yeah, good stuff. Now, Randa, how long have you had this 24-row, 60-foot planter? This is our second season with it. Okay. We okay. got it new to us last year. Okay, so it was used when you got it. Yep. And now, what I'm learning is that the planter bar itself, I mean, it has a model number on it, mm -hmm. 1770 in this case, but you had a 1795 before this one that was older. Or the frame's newer. The frame is newer. Okay. so. What you're saying is that the planter itself, the, the, it's kind of separate. The actual units that do the planting versus the frame, you kind of treat all that separately. Well, in this case, this one has had the a retrofit kit put on it. Okay. This is a 13 model 1770 NT frame with the ME5E retrofit kit for okay. electric drive meters. Okay. So ME5 electric drive meters. Electric drive meters. So. Mm -hmm. What do you, how does that work? Well, there's a generator that runs on the power takeoff. No runs kidding. 56 volts. It's okay. kind of an interesting number. Okay, so your, your, your PTO shaft, just like a small tractor PTO shaft, is driving a big generator. Yeah. And then you've just got electric cables running back there to each of the 24 rows. Yep, there's an electric motor at the front side of every meter that turns the meter individually. The stuff the black dirt farmers don't have to deal with. They just have big square fields with no brush, no ditches. Exactly. Wouldn't that be nice? Exactly. How do you think one of those uh, autonomous tractors would handle some of this? Well, I'd have to think it would struggle. <laughs> but I suppose someday they'll have it where they can do it. But it's going to be a little while. Well, it just seems to me like it's going to be really hard with, with the variety of soil and the variety of well these ditches and hills and woods and it's just gonna be hard here <laughs> it's not flat and square and right. no brush to be seen yeah. so this adds another challenge it'd be hard not to fall asleep if I was farming up in the north part of the state <laughs> you wouldn't have anything to watch yeah be over here watching videos on the iPad or something yeah you watch YouTube there you go. You know, there's this guy who does tractor videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these electric meters that, that turn, do they turn at a set rate? Or how, how, do, how do they know how fast to turn? And how does that work? Well, they're using radar speed or wheel speed sensor on the planter and GPS speed. We have several speed sources to make okay. to, so that everything makes sure you're, that it knows how fast you're going. And you have a set rate of seeds per acre that you want to plant or your prescription tells you how many seeds per acre in what certain areas. So it may change throughout the field. Yeah, it can. But it its goal then is to keep it as close to that as possible. Okay, so where on my one row planter, I've got a chain that drives from a ground wheel and that's what drives my meter. Yep. This is replacing that. So this is using electricity to, to do that. Yeah. 56 volts of probably DC current to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the vacuum, it's got a vacuum on it. What does that do? Well, there's a plate that the meter is turning, that the electric motor is turning. It's got a 40 cell plate that has got 40 holes in it that okay. each pick up a seed kernel. Okay. And uh, the vacuum is what holds a kernel to that plate. Okay, so the vacuum is used to, to basically suck the kernel into the plate. Yeah. And since the plate, plate has a hole in it, only one kernel can get sucked in there. Right. And that's where you get your accuracy. Yes. Here's some of the ditches we're talking about. Now we use the no-till to reduce erosion, but even then we have ditches. Yeah. The no-tilling makes the ditches look worse than they are. Yeah, because before we use no-till, every spring we would 
we you'd would, work them in and it'd look all nice. Yeah, we'd get it nice every but, spring and the ditch would be relatively small by fall, but it would exist. But now, after three, four, five years, the ditch looks yeah. worse. Mm -hmm. So overall, we are saving soil, even though the ditches look pretty, pretty bad in some places. Yeah, and they're sometimes rough to cross. Yeah. The meters, the and the kit, the retrofit kit was added to this planter. Is eight? It was done in eighteen. Okay. So the meters and the electric, all the electric drive part was added later as a John Deere okay. retrofit kit that they sell specifically to be able to do this. So they have all these upgrades. And the, another upgrade that I saw on this one is is the air down pressure or whatever. Hydraulic. Oh, it's hydraulic down pressure. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a. That's a part of that upgrade that was done then. Okay. Because originally this would have been a hydraulic drive, a hydraulic motor to turn the shaft, turn a big hex shaft that runs the you and know width run. of the planter, half the planter, whatever. Yeah. And then there's a the cable that goes to them to the to each meter that runs off of a gearbox of so worm gear off that shaft. Yeah, I think we've shown that. We used to have the other planter has that. Okay. Yeah, it's got hydraulic drive. And so the, the difference is is that the electric is more accurate? You Those cables have a, little have a little twist to them. And even with, when we had ESETs on our previous 1790, they would still, they would do a great job singulating, but the drop still wasn't as good as the old mechanical drive 12 row, as the old finger pickup meters. The drop would not be as pretty picket fence as it, even with ESET meters hydraulic drive so after we've gone to the, or the this electric drive eliminates those cables and we have got a really pretty drop out of this planter so far some of you guys thought that farming wasn't technical and others of you realize oh my goodness I didn't catch a word of what he was saying there. <laughs> yeah. and, and and that makes sense right this is this is high-tech stuff and the objective is uh-oh I believe we're out of seed number one we just so will head to the truck and out or just head to the truck yeah but I imagine they're all about gone now we just ran out of seed and we're out in the middle of the field but we'll have no problem finding that spot again You'll just drive right back out there and it'll start planting right where it left off. Right? Yep. We've been in this field for several videos actually over the years. This, this is one that Christy and I own. And so uh, it's 80 acres total. But there's a woods over here that takes up about 11 acres of it. So it's roughly 69 acres that's farmable. We try to let the uh, grass or weeds grow up in these ditches again to try to help with the erosion control. There's also a field tile, drainage tile, under every one of those ditches. Uh, when I first got the farm, uh, it was not crossable. These ditches weren't crossable. Uh, in fact, right out here, there were a bunch of trees and stuff that had grown up. This one was all grown up in my memory. Yeah, we had to farm it as two separate fields. But the crossing was in through the woods right there to get to the back field. Yep, and it was them. only about 20 feet wide. <laughs> I remember going through there with you, I think. Probably. You were driving, you were in the 4560 with a grain cart on it. I think you had me sitting between, my, between your knees steering. Interesting. That's some of my first memory of driving tractor was between your knees and 4560 in the grain cart right up there west of the barn. Okay. Well, I've got video of your very first time driving the combine by yourself right up here as well. Yep, right around the corner of the woods right here, I think. Right here? Yeah, so you know, there are a lot of memories uh, that get that get generated in some of these same fields. Even though, you know, in this case, you've got several different fields you work in. Uh, it's it's more personal than than a business. It is. Yeah, you turned right out there with the combine, and it was your very first turn with the combine by yourself. But you still somehow found a moment to wave at the camera. Yeah, and I don't think I got turned quite back to far enough. I watched that video just the other day. It was and I don't I think it probably had to stop and back up because I didn't get steered back around the other way because of that <laughs> you couldn't have been but probably 10 years old max I don't know maybe not yeah, it would have been old. 10 years old when we got that 9750 okay that was the first so, green one yeah but that was the first time I sat in the seat by myself I think though I think I, I drove the red one a little bit sitting on granddad's leg the 2188 yeah before that 
But I think he was sitting in the passenger seat, wasn't he? He was that whenever on their video clip there. He was probably trying to tell me to turn and I was sitting there waving instead. He seemed to be pretty happy. <laughs> I didn't get a big enough hole tore in it. I guess I can do one more of these. Yeah, I go ahead and put those in. Make sure we get every single kernel out of the bag. $300 per bag. Why do you use the bags instead of those big boxes like the pros? Because I want to plant too many different hybrids. OK. <laughs> and I like doing it the hard way. <laughs> I guess I feel like we don't farm enough to, to, to try a new hybrid and give 50 bags of it as a trial. Okay. So one of those boxes is equivalent to 50 bags. Yep. It's the last one. Last one. Easy slide. Didn't take long, Randall. No, not too bad. 69 acres. All done. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's kind of hard to show you close up what really is going on sometimes in the field, but uh, interesting discussion here with Randall. Hope I was able to make some kind of sense of some of it. <laughs> yeah, part of that probably sounded like gibberish. It was. probably did. And part of it probably came out as gibberish, for real. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with Tim. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Hey. Wave by to Dad. Bye. Bye.